Hello everybody and welcome back to Juno New Origins where we have made this very reasonable contraption in order to get to Silero within the within the date here that we can time limit the time limit those are words fantastic let's see how this thing flies the question is are we going to be able to get this into orbit in a reasonable way with the added weight up top that's the question. We added a bunch of SRBs, but we do not have additional liquid boosters. So we will see just how well this ends up going. Let's try to push this up and see what happens. Actually, I'm not entirely certain the staging is right either. We'll, uh, we'll find out. Not all of the engines are lit. Well, that's problematic. Okay, we're gonna pull this back and we are definitely gonna check the staging. That is very clear at this point, staging is broken. So let's hop in here and let's see what we've got. So we've got these 34 engines in the first stage, but why are these five not? Who knows? We're gonna move them down and all 15 of these stages fall off, then our five liquid fueled stages, and then the interstage separates and all of these engines fire. That seems correct. This, however, is a problem. And we, of course, can't add a 10th stage. But we need these to fall off slightly differently. Right? So that is absolutely understood. I want to make sure that these are set to fuel transfer mode normal. They are. And the problem here, of course, is that we need these to not all detach at the same time. We need these to detach separately. We could just... Oh, hello. I did not want to do that. Undo? There we go. We could just manually do this. That's a theoretical option. Yeah, we could manually stage that. I think that's okay. So that's fine. Then these engines would fire. The legs would go, which the legs wouldn't have to necessarily be in their own stage. Then we would have this and this and this. Okay, looks good. Now, Silero does have a thin atmosphere. We'll probably try to use the parachutes. I'm not planning to land on the parachutes on Silero, to be clear. We're planning on doing a powered landing on Silero, but the parachutes might help matters a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and put this out on the pad now that our staging is probably correct-er, more correct. And let's put this at 70 degrees and lift off with all of our SRBs firing this time instead of nearly most of them. Wonderful. So off we go, and let's keep an eye on SRB fuel. So this is looking fine. Our next stage would be ditching all of the SRBs simultaneously, which is absolutely correct. So we've got about 40% fuel left here. How are we doing here? Apoapsis is looking pretty good. Let's drop this to 45. Thrust to weight is quite high here, but we need to punch up high. So three, two, one, and zero. Whoa, that was really strange. Okay, so some of these SRBs are clearly not actually attached to their decouplers. And that's a problem, no doubt about that. They're gone now but we carried their weight for longer than I would have liked. So let's pull this back and make sure that those are properly connected to their decouplers. So which ones are not connected? I'm guessing it's these right here. So we're gonna take that off and I'm going to make sure that it is ideally attached to the decoupler. Looks like it is. Now we're going to need to move it up so we would go like this and just have it be pretty much in line with the others right on the ground this one could actually be moved down ever so slightly like that okay let's make sure that that didn't break the staging and we also know that these five interstages are fine so yeah that looks good hopefully that fixes that particular problem 
Okay, let's put this at 70 degrees, throttle up, and off we go. So we have high thrust to weight. There's no doubt about that. And to that end, we may want to punch over a little bit, a little bit sooner. I don't know. We'll, we'll just hold here for now. That's 10 kilometers, apoapsis. So we're going to be at about 20 kilometers now. Let's move that over to a 45 degree pitch. And I'm actually going to put this at about a 30 degree pitch at this moment. We have very high thrust to weight and this is fine. Okay, so SRBs are burnt out and let's get rid of them. Okay, so some of these don't really decouple correctly and they like clip in. They do burn off pretty quickly once they do that. But this one's stuck in there for a while. That's noted. That's definitely not ideal. Okay. Also in the category of not necessarily ideal is this trajectory. Although I think it's fine. Yeah, this is going up reasonably at this point. So I think it's okay. That's 70 kilometers, so I want to drop us down to a 15 degree pitch at this point. 75 kilometers. That SRB detachment is definitely, definitely not ideal. But at this point, we can be at a zero degree pitch and be putting our delta V purely into lateral velocity. Our apoapsis is now high enough. So that seems good. And we're of course going to be ditching our side boosters fairly shortly here. We've got about 17% fuel left. I just want to double check here that our fuel transfer is working correctly. It is. Okay. I have no idea if the fuel transfer up here is working correctly. Okay. So we're still holding at about 93 kilometer apoapsis. Time to apoapsis is currently increasing, but we are going to be losing these side tanks now. Okay, so we've got about 700 meters per second in this. That is noted. That should be enough to get us into orbit, just squeaking us in, I think. So let's bring this up to... We could just sit it at 100 kilometers. That's probably okay. Or we could try to go up a fair amount higher than that. But our DV is going to be a consideration at that point. So let's just put this up to... Actually, time to apoapsis is dropping right now. So let's just continue to burn here for the moment. We clearly need some additional orbital velocity. This actually isn't quite going to kick us into orbit as I look here. Yeah, it's not quite going to kick us into orbit, but it's going to be very, very close. If we didn't have the awkward SRB detachment, it might do the trick, but who knows? Who knows? So we've got about 300 meters per second left in DV here, and about a third fuel left, so that's that, that definitely checks out. And this fuel out here should be draining to here, in theory. We'll check to see if that's working correctly. But first, we gotta punch this up into approximate orbit here. You can see time to apoapsis is increasing at this point. And we're approaching orbital velocity, but this burn isn't necessarily raising our periapsis all that much. I think it's fine for the moment. So we're three minutes, we can shut this down, but I don't actually think there's a reason to. I'm gonna burn the rest of this fuel and we're going to cut the throttle. We're now coasting. And at this point, I wanna come up to the apoapsis and look at circularizing this. So what's that going to be? That's gonna be like a hundred meters per second. That's not too bad. We could definitely boost up the power level of that first stage a little bit more but that's probably fine. So let's go ahead and burn this. That's going to be a 21 second burn with the question being, what's our fuel flow look like? So let's look here, not pulling fuel. 
here we are pulling fuel. Okay, so we need to set these to be drained out here. And then these to be filled for right now. So one, two, okay. And we're ending the uh, ending the burn there. So we're going to do something kind of like this. And this tank should be remaining, just disable fuel transfer for now. Okay, so all of these tanks are good. We can see these guys, they have wildly different amounts of fuel. That's interesting. I'm not entirely sure why that's happening, but okay. So at this point, we now need to head out to Silero, right? So we need to select Silero here, and we need to get ourselves set up for the burn to Silero. So that's going to be planning a burn here. Ish. And we'll see what that ends up feeling like. So that is an escape out this direction. Yeah, that's going the wrong way. We definitely want to do that burn more like over here-ish. That would be potentially a couple of gravity assists. Okay. We could pull it back and just put it about... here or so, but I don't like this timing. I don't... I, the gravity assists are doing a little too much. Okay. So we would do it something kind of like this and just pull that back to be right out over here. Let's turn that sensitivity way, way down and have that be about here. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and execute that burn. The core issue here, of course, is we have wildly different amounts of fuel draw here. So that's going to be somewhat awkward. Yeah, that's going to be quite awkward. Well, we'll just let it go for now. And how long is this burn going to be? About a three-minute burn? Okay, so let's accelerate that up to 2x, and let's keep an eye on the fuel here. It appears to be draining at about the same rate. I think it's just because I activated it at different times. I'm pretty sure that's what we've got going on. So once these run out of fuel, we're going to need to manually go through and stage these. So that is fine. And I actually think these might be getting somewhat close to evening up. Emphasis on somewhat. How are we doing on this burn? We're about 55% done with it. Okay. Two, one, zero. Okay. So you can see here, we're losing attitude as these engines burn out. But now what we need to do is we need to go around and jettison each and every one of these. So we're on one fourth speed right now. And we need to activate each of these parts. Are these not attached to the decoupler? They're not. Of course they're not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a significant issue that I've had with this game is that, yeah, they're not connected. I can actually see that now. A lot of times it does not connect them to the decoupler when I put them in like that. And it just puts it, it, it attaches it here to the fuel tank. It's a minor thing, but it is definitely irritating. Okay, so let's put this here. That means that we're going to have to make some... Or we're going to have to lift this again, which is fine. What that means is that allows us to come in here and potentially increase the detachment force on these side interstages. Actually, we can't. There is no increase of the, det of the detachment force. Maybe we could increase the size of the decoupler just to have them be a little bit further out. And maybe that'll clean up the detachment a little bit. Maybe. Okay, let's put this out on the pad, and let's try that again. We can also make a few alterations out here, such as the fact that we know that we're going to need to be filling these fuel tanks, right? And doing it like so. 
and then we're going to need to be draining these exterior fuel tanks. Like so. So that's pre-set up now. And we can put this at 70 degrees. And let's go. Excellent. So hopefully that cleans up our detachment of our SRVs a little bit. And hopefully that cleans up our attitude as those engines shut off as well. That should hopefully solve both of those issues. We'll see if it actually does. Okay, so I'm going to preempt our move over to 45 degrees here. We're just going to put ourselves somewhere around here. Excellent. And then four, three, two, one, SRBs detaching now. That is a cleaner SRB detachment. I'm not going to call it tremendously clean, but it is definitely cleaner. Okay, looking out over here, have we broken our fuel transfer? We have not. Looks good. Okay, so we're now holding at 30 degrees. We are at an apoapsis of about 60 kilometers, and I'm going to stay here until we hit an apoapsis of 70 kilometers, at which point we'll drop this down to about a 15 degree. So we're at 70 now, so let's drop this to a 15 degree pitch. We'll hold here until we hit an apoapsis of 80 kilometers, at which point we're just going to sit at zero. So that looks great. And we're basically at an apoapsis of 80. I'm going to drop us down to zero right now. And we're putting this purely into lateral speed from here. Okay. So fingers crossed that we've got this ascent under control now. We've got about 20% fuel left in these side tanks, and that is going to propel us quite a ways, for sure. So we can see our apoapsis is currently at around 86 kilometers, and we'll keep burning here for now. We see our time to apoapsis is going up, and we'd love to see that continue to go up for a while. We do need quite a lot of orbital velocity here still. We've got 5% fuel left in these side tanks. Three, two, one. One, and we are out of fuel now. So we'll ditch those, and off we go. So we can see our apoapsis is only about 94 kilometers right now, and I think I am going to put this at 100, and then do, well, we don't really, we're not in a position for a coast phase necessarily, is the thing. So that is absolutely understood. This first stage is still a little bit underpowered to have all of these extra strap-on boosters. And we could definitely do the same thing on this bottom stage that we did up here, right? And just duplicate those side liquid fuel boosters and then put the SRBs on the outside of that. That's a theoretical possibility. And I don't think we need to. I don't believe that that is required. So we're currently at 98 kilometer apoapsis, and this is looking absolutely fine. We are going to want to coast this a little bit. Time to apoapsis is increasing now. So let's put this on 1x. Engine cut. And we are going to plan burn at apoapsis, and that is going to be raising up our apoapsis to... This is close enough. Okay, go ahead and execute that. That'll be 389 meters per second. So we're not quite going to get that burn entirely out of this stage, but it's going to be very close. Cool. So that looks solid. We've got another roughly 200 meters per second here, and our periapsis should be pretty close to in orbit or actually in orbit by the time we run out of fuel here. We'll see what that looks like. So we've got about 80 meters per second left. 40 meters per second left. Okay. And now we're here. So we're burning at the apoapsis right now. We can see these are definitely evenly draining at this point, and our periapsis is coming up nicely. I like it. 
So our periapsis puts us in orbit officially right now. And this is good. This is absolutely fine. So we burned 12% of this fuel to put ourselves into orbit. That's okay. So at this point, I think we're actually ready to head to Silero. <laughs> Hopefully. So let's set Sil Silero as our target, and let's prepare ourselves for this launch. So we're going to be burning sometime around here. This is going to be a prograde burn, and we're just going to escape the... Okay, yeah. We're going to escape the system here. Do we want to gravity assist here? Probably not. I think we're not going to gravity assist because of potential inclination. So let's just push this guy right on out, and it'll be something like this. That's a little bit overkill from where I want it to be, and we'll just put it about here. Okay, so that'll be a 3.5 minute burn. And we'll commence that burn shortly here. There we go, we'll go up to 2x. And we're going to have to manually stage these, but the majority of this fuel is going to come from these external tanks. So that sounds fine. And we'll just get accelerated right on up. So about 1.1 kilometers per second here. Sounds good. We've got about 50% fuel left out here. And you can see our thrust to weight is kind of mediocre, but that is to be expected. So we're pulling fuel from the outside in at this point. This fuel in the center is not being drained at all. So that looks good for the moment. We've got about 25% fuel left in these external drop tanks. And as you can see, we have passed 50% on this burn. So that is looking good. 10% fuel left in the side tanks. I'm going to pull us out of warp here. Two, one, zero. Okay, so those are shut down. I want to pause it. So with the game paused, we're now going to go around and we're going to actuate all of these because we want to no longer be carrying this weight. This is all dead weight at this point. Beautiful. Now we can resume. And as you can see, we are pulling from the outside here. We don't actually need to have these on still, but it, it is kind of useful to be able to see how much fuel is in those tanks. So I'll leave that there. That seems fine. Wonderful. So our thrust away did drop a little bit, but that's to be expected. We lost four engines, and I mean, that's a third of our engines, right? And the dry mass there, that's not that big of a deal. So we're 85% of the way through this burn. That looks good. And this burn is going to finish very soon. You can see this stage has 2.66 kilometers per second of dB in it still. So that seems absolutely fine. Now we're going to need to find that encounter that we had before. And that could be interesting to do. No doubt about that. So 99% and 100% on that burn. Okay. So that looks good. And we should probably extend our solar panels. That would help. There we go. And now what we need to do is we need to find that maneuver. Which, if I recall correctly, the burn was somewhere around here. And then we would bring it out this way. And we need to set Silero as our target. That would help. So yeah, we would do it out here. And then we would do a big orbital twist. Like this. To get ourselves there quickly enough. That timing is not correct in the slightest. Right. Okay, so we need to find this. I'm not sure where it was, but it is time to put a cut in here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we will hopefully have already found not necessarily the exact same encounter, but possibly one that will work, right? That would be the idea. So let's see here. I believe it was somewhere out this way, if I recall correctly. 
but that's fine. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Atala, Andy Magar, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Xenocyte, Hiro Marutsu, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, The Lounge STL, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.